All right. Welcome, welcome everybody to this Friday night uh, Shabbat Bible study. We're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Baruch Atah Adonai, Lehena Malek HaAlam, Asher Kishinu, B'mitzvotah, V'sevano Lassuk, Sereprit Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with your commandments and command us to engross ourselves in the words of your Torah. Those that don't know, the Torah is simply the writings of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those are foundational books of the Bible. Uh, History, uh, critical history is found in those books. Uh, Table of Nations, you know, after the flood, uh, the, the nations were created through the lineage of um, of Noah, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so this is the most complete record of where their, their offspring um, settled in the world. You know, Gog and Magog, you know, you see Russia and Germany. Um, it lets us know where the uh, Gentiles, and those are primarily the people that from the Caucasus Mountains or the Caucasians, they were originally uh, considered Gentiles. Uh, but, you know, eventually Israel was spread all over the world. And I'm just kind of giving you some uh, glimpses into some of our future studies, but uh, we, we do need to understand uh, coming out of the flood that all the population came through Noah by way of his uh, three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so we're gonna be dealing with um, a really important figure today um, from the uh, this, uh, lineage of Ham, and that's Cush and Nimrod. Uh, Cush was uh, the grandson of Noah, and then Nimrod was his son, so Noah's great-grandson. Uh, these are the individuals that really began to really create havoc uh, in the world in, in the form of uh, paganism <clears throat> and false religion. We're going to look at some things today. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. I just want to um, show you some things here. So what's taking place? What What is the, the end game? What Babylon represented was a one world government. Yeah, yeah. It was one world government. Everybody yeah. spoke the same language. Mm -hmm. And he literally, he was the first uh, world ruler, Nimrod. And so that was Satan's original plan was to, you know, because he wants to be like the Most High. So what is the Most High like? The Most High has a son, Yeshua HaMashiach, in whom he receives glory through the Son. And so Satan is trying to do the same thing. So Nimrod was, was sort of his uh, representative on the earth, just like Yeshua came and was representing the Most High on the mm -hmm. earth, right? And so Satan wants to be worshipped through his representatives. And I showed you the different names of the different representatives that he's had, depending upon you know whether you're in Egypt or, or um, Babylon or wherever, right? And so his ultimate goal and plan is to have a one world government. And I'm gonna show you some, some things here that's, that's letting us know that we're moving towards a one world government. Now, we're citizens of what country? United States. United States, right? Mm -hmm. But this right here is talking about what? Global, global citizenship. Festival. A global citizenship festival. So what is a citizen? Miriam Webster says a citizen is a member of a state, a native or naturalized, meaning either you were born in or you became through a process, naturalization process, a person who owes allegiance to a government and is entitled to protection from it, right? That's so that government is going to provide some protection. So if you are a global citizen, then you become a citizen of that global government, okay? So we're going to see here that every year they're having a global citizens rally, right? A global citizens rally. And, and there's, you know, so there must be some form of a global gov government if they're having this global rally, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to learn more about it, globalcitizen.org to learn more about what it means to be a global citizen. And it's all leading towards 
this United Nations, virtually every country on the planet comes under this umbrella. And they have basically pledged themselves, including the United States, all these, these countries have pledged themselves to basically obedience to the United Nations. So the United Nations have had, they have the structure to be a one world government. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the juice yet. There's, there's gotta be a person that comes on the scene that the nations will say, okay, he's worthy of my, my allegiance. Huh. Huh. Right, that's where they're moving towards. <laughs> and once this person comes on the scene, then what the, what the book of Revelation says, who can make war with him? You know, they're gonna they're gonna literally give their allegiance to this this world ruler. That's right. Okay, so I'm 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 just I'm I'm sharing this information with you guys. I want you to know the Bible has been talking about this, right? But people need to recognize and wake up and realize this this is on the way. The United Nations is a is a part of the complete symbolism of the beast found in Revelation 13 and the fourth beast of Daniel 7. They're both exactly the same. Mm. And it's coming up under uh, the disguise of the United Nations, okay? Mm -hmm. So his authority will be granted by Satan. Mm. Satan is gonna give the authority to this ruler that's gonna be uh, in charge of the United Nations and is gonna be over the entire world. So this is where we're going, mm. a new world order. It, you know, and they've been talking about this I know it goes back to uh, at least Reagan. When Reagan was in power in what, uh, 84, I believe. Mm -hmm. They've been talking about New World Order. Every president since Reagan have spoken the words New World Order. Okay. So you can't have a New World Order unless the old order is done away with, mm -hmm. right? Unless the old order is done away with. And so there's going to be some event that's going to lead to the destruction of that. This is just another. This is Whoopi Goldberg, mm -hmm. you know, at another one of these, what, global citizen events. You know, even uh, Bill Gates, what he's saying, mm -hmm. become a global citizen, right? right? Oh. Become a global citizen. So, you know, it, folks, it's right around the corner. You know, it could very easily happen in our lifetime. Th this, These things I'm talking to you right, right now about is inevitable. There's going to be a world government mm -hmm. because it's already been prophesied in the in the scriptures. There's nothing we, we can't pray it, we can't fast it, we can't do anything to, to stop these things because this is prophetic. Right, right. It's already been said. My what I'm doing right now is educating you on what is to come. Okay. And prepare yourself because you gotta be on the right side of this thing. You gotta be on the right side of it. Mm -hmm. Because what we what we talking about when when this beast come into power, we're only talking about a seven year period. A seven year period when he's going to be in power, and the scriptures do say that he's going to be he's going to be given power to make war with the saints, mm -hmm. and he's actually going to overcome some, and 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 the saints who who have already been glorified. They're going to say, when are you going to uh, avenge, you know, the blood of, of our brothers and sisters? And and he, and he said, the day is coming because he, he's literally going to be beheading some. Some, right, some people right. are going to have to be martyred to show the proof because he said they love not their lives unto death. Mm -hmm. Unto death. So this is a sobering conversation. I get that. This, this is not the shouting part of this message, but it's something you need to understand that we can't have uh, the Esau mentality. Esau had a, had the right to be the firstborn son mm -hmm. and to get the, 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 blessing. the blessing of the firstborn. And he gave up the blessing of the firstborn for a bowl of soup. Yeah. I'm hungry, right? I'm a, I'm a, I don't care about no birth, right? Give me some soup. Mm -hmm. So some people are going to give up eternal life for the privilege of being able to buy and sell. You know, for a season of seven years or maybe six years or five years left or four or three years left. And they're gonna say, man, I'm not gonna go through all this stuff, man. Give me that, give me that bar, give me that chip. And what, what does it take? You know, 
And there's going to be some people who are going to know the truth still and still do the wrong thing. And, and, and we talking about trading in eternity for a temporary benefit. You got to ask yourself, what's, is it worth it? Right? So, so again, part of the job is going to be you know, to protect your human rights, right? And this final one is to uphold international law. So this international law is going to supersede any laws of, of any nation. You know, they're going to become the authority on, on the earth. So this, this global citizenship, this global um, rulership is going to take uh, precedence over everything else. It says here regarding uh, uh, uphold international law, these powers are given to it by the UN Charter, which is considered an international treaty. As such, it is an instrument of international law, and the UN member states are bound by it. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in print, they, they already have the authority. The only thing that's missing is the leader. Right. The only thing that's missing is the leader that's going to enforce these, these responsibilities. All right. And it's interesting on your money. I don't know if anybody got a dollar, but right here, this saying that's on a dollar is talking about the, the, the new world order. This is saying in God we trust in the new world order is, is what it's saying in, in Latin. OK, so it's going to be one world government. Yeah, it says right on the dollar. The new world order. The new world order It's on is on a dollar. Now, uh, Mark of the Beast. Uh, you know, everybody know, you know, nobody's going to be able to buy or sell without having, you know, the mark of the beast either in your hand or in your forehead, right? That's what the scriptures say. So what we're seeing right here is a demonstration of a person who already has this chip and he's being scanned here. This this guy is, is, is making a transaction and he's scanning this chip. And this is what his comment is. I can't believe it. He just paid with his hand. Mm. Oh, wow. He just paid with his hand. When he scanned his, that chip, the money was transferred from uh, the chip in his hand, and he was able to make a payment. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's the, the time is here, folks. So the technology is in place where the mark of the beast can actually happen. Like I say, you know, I've been in this thing for 45 years. You know, 40 years ago, the technology did not exist right. where they could have uh, transactions being done through hands like that. You know, we thought it might just be some kind of a scanning code, but no, it's going to be a literal chip that's going to have all your information in it. Thanks. So, any any questions? Any questions? Stop this mm -hmm. share. Mm -hmm. they, I'm sorry, for the last seven years, so seven years of our... Seven, yeah, seven, yeah, not 7,000 years, seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, wow. Not the seven years, that's when everything happens. Uh, judgment, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be judgments, you know, um, wow. you know, seven bowls, bow, seven bowls, seven trumpets, yeah. and all that stuff going to be happening all during uh, that seven-year reign. You know, initially, he's going to, you know, he's going to come into power. They're going to be talking about peace and safety, right? Uh -huh. But yeah. then uh, after that, is going to be sudden destruction because, uh, you know, it's basically the people are choosing to um, worship the devil over the most high. I see there's a question in the chat, I believe. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. That's, a, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, Megan asked a question. What if people actually get this mark? And later realize it's not for them. What can they do? Let me let me, let me pull this up. What the scriptures read? This was in Revelation thirteen. Revelation thirteen. Next page. All right, we're gonna start at verse four. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast?" who was able to make war with him. It's something I stated earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle 
and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, right? Mm -hmm. So he, this is a person that will come in power at the UN, mm -hmm. right? He's going to have power over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we know that people are going to be worshiping him and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, this is their counterfeit of the resurrection of Yeshua, mm -hmm. right? They, they're going to have some person, this is uh, this beast, uh, this leader, is going to be killed and then he's going to be brought back to life. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Mm -hmm. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their mm -hmm. forehead, foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. And his number is 600, six score, three score and six, or 666. Six, six. Mm. So this guy is going to be in power, and he's going to cause these people. First of all, he's already demonstrated that mm -hmm. he is satanic. He's been profaning the name of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So those of us who know the scriptures, who have been studying, who have been learning the most highest ways. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, and why am I having this lesson? To prepare you for what's to come. And if it happens in our lifetime, I want you to be ready, right? So when the signs of these things are showing up, you know, you don't want to fall prey to it, whatever it looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, if it, you know, because I don't know how it's going to unroll, un unfold, right? Mm -hmm. But we certainly know. I know I'm not taking no chip in my hand. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, and, and, and Elon Musk from Tesla, he's got a chip that he's working on that can go in the, into the brain. They're working on the technology already. So you know, obviously going to probably be some, some uh, interface in the forehead mm -hmm. that, you know, you can scan and, and, and they can keep all that madness. So we just need to recognize that this stuff is real. And it is coming. So we need to prepare ourselves for an, an alternative lifestyle. And I'm not talking about no gay lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, so how do I live if they get to the point where I can't buy or sell, I can't access money? You know, and I'm talking about, you know, the digital money. Because mm -hmm. you can you can have your, your safe full of money. But if they if they get off of the currency, ain't as we good. know, it, it ain't going to be any good. It's gonna, it's, they're only going to have a digital currency. And so if you don't have access to it, and if you, you, know, if you don't have a chip, you're not going to have access to, to, that, to the, um, the blockchain. So that's like the Bitcoin or something? Exactly. Bitcoin is the forerunner to this digital currency that they're going to use. Bitcoin is the forerunner. It's the one that provided the technology that they need to do all the stuff they need to do. Mm -hmm. Nice. Hmm? Well, well, the thing is, I mean... The Bitcoin is not evil, no more than a gun is evil. Mm -hmm. It's it's what's what you know what's done in the in the hands of the person who uses it. The devil is giving this technology to people mm -hmm. so that he can set things in motion to create what he wants to create in this end time. And one of the things that the Most High said about the day of Nimrod is every person here is, uh, is of the same language. Mm -hmm. They can all communicate with each other. Well, guess what happens when they go to the UN and they have meetings? Mm -hmm. They have headphones mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. right? And, they, and they're speaking to this mic right. and it's immediately translated okay. into the language right. of the nation that they're talking okay. to. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So, so what is that doing now? It's giving them one speech right. again. Right. 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 So, right. so where, where the most high confounded the languages now the technology exists where yeah it may be you know a whole bunch of different languages 
but we have a technology now where we can all speak together mm -hmm. as one voice. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we we have come full circle. We're right back to the Tower of Babel again. Mm -hmm. We're right back there, creating this one world government. You know, for the purpose. And what, what did they want to build that tower for? To have okay. war. War with, with the same thing happened. Yeah, they want to make war with the Most High. And when all this is said and done, you know, he's going to rally his troops again. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the devil and, 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 and the beast to make war with the saints. You know, but then eventually, when you see, look at Daniel's account of this thing, he says it's going, it's going to be a boulder, it's going to show up, and it's going to destroy the other four uh, kingdoms of the world. And he's going to eventually set up a kingdom that cannot be defeated. He's talking about Yeshua's kingdom. When Yeshua establishes his kingdom that will never come to an end, mm -hmm. we who are serving him are going to rule and reign with him right. forever. So that means all of us, some of us might still be alive through this, right? Yeah, some of us may make it to the end. Right. right you know, right, right. when when Yeshua uh, gets ready to come back and establish his throne. So when he come back, are we still we going to be caught up? Or we gonna... Yes, what's going to happen? Thessalonians talks about it. Let, let me go to this real quick. All right. So First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians four. All right. We'll start reading at verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua will Elohim bring with him. Mm -hmm. okay. For this we say unto you by the word of, of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of Yahweh, of or Yeshua, shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep. For, for Adon himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them, meet Yahweh where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with Yahweh, with, with Adon. So we're meeting him in the air. It didn't say we, you know, we were caught up in the heaven. Right, right, right. We're meeting him in the air. So then the question, and the final thing I'm gonna say here, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We're going to meet him in the air. Now, let's go to uh, and look at your go to your table of contents to Zechariah. Zechariah, let's go to chapter fourteen. I made it at thirteen. Oh, so we'll see. Yeah. We're going to start reading at verse one. Megan said, "You have some people who don't, who really don't know and don't read the fine print." <laughs> you know what though? Um, they need to start. That's one reason why I started this Bible study. Right, right. Because the scriptures tell us to study, mm -hmm. to show ourselves approved, mm -hmm. a workman that need not be ashamed, right? Mm -hmm. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He gave us this book. You know, um, I got a new garage door uh, opener, and it has some different features and stuff in it. And so I had to get the book out and start studying it because, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be able to have an app on my phone that I, can, that I can use to open the garage door for stuff from my phone, right? So without reading the book, I won't know how to use the app. Right. right, right. Well, guess what? Without reading this book, you won't know how to use your body, mm. your, your person, who you are, because this is basic instruction before leaving earth. Right. The Bible, mm. basic instructions before leaving earth. And, you know, every person that is, you know, this Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody right now is making plans to go to some hotel or motel right. yeah. to creep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they get to that motel, they open up that door, that drawer. It's probably a Bible right there. Yeah. That's what they would tell them that you shouldn't be doing what you're right, doing right, right now. Right. You know, so the reality is, Megan, people are really without excuse. Because we make time to do the stuff that's important to us. But the Most High gave us a book of instruction to help us to know what's coming. I mean, look at how much stuff that I've shared with you guys today. You know, just, you know, just 
this is better than CNN news right now. Right, right, right. You know, to help you to know and understand what is really taking place today. Mm -hmm. You know, so people are without excuse. Mm -hmm. They need to take the time to get into that word mm -hmm. and to understand because this, 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 this is prophecy telling us what's coming. Mm -hmm. So we need to be prepared for it. So, you know, they need to start reading the fine print, in other words, okay? Yeah, um, that book I used to read, Revelation to Hell, mm -hmm. every time somebody died, when he sure came and got him and took him to the pit, because he said, when they asked, he said, I sent people to tell you, mm -hmm. and you, you couldn't give up your ways. Exactly, right, right. And I was like, wow. Yeah, so, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, the most high... And, I, and it's a script I want to read. I'm, I'm going to read that too. Um, don't let me forget. I have a script I need to read. Don't let me forget. If I haven't, if I'm, if I okay. haven't gone to it, don't let me. Okay. Don't let me forget. Okay. I should go to it right after this one. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 14, 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, the day of Yahweh comes. Now I've told y'all in, in previous lessons, the day mm -hmm. of Yahweh is not a day of you know jumping and shouting and having joy. Mm -hmm. It's a day of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So behold, the day of Yahweh comes. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken. And the houses rifled. And the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, when I, I read this, first time I read this, I was confused. You're gathering nations against Jerusalem to battle. And their houses are going to be rifled and the women ravished. And I said, but those are your people. Right. But then when you read in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9, I know those who say they're Jews but are not, but they're of the household of Satan. The, the six-point star is a satanic symbol. There's no star of David. That is a satanic symbol. So... There are some people in Jerusalem, and I'm talking about a lot of the leadership. They're satanic, mm. you know. So, so that's why a lot of the stuff is go on, right? Yeah. So, so verse three. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. Mm. And Yahweh my, my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. So what I believe is happening here, the dead in, in Mashiach shall rise, mm -hmm. and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with Elohim mm -hmm. in the air, where, with, with, with Yeshua in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. Why? Because he's on his way to Jerusalem. Oh. He's on his way to Jerusalem and he's got all his saints with him because he's going to win this battle and Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. So you see what's happening here. He's establishing his, his thousand year reign right, 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 right. and all his saints are with him. In that day shall there be one uh, Adon and his name one and men shall dwell in it. And there should be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague where, where on, uh, the Adon will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Mm. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Mm. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouths. Mm. Now, when I read that, what does that sound like to you? Like they melted away. So. Atomic, right. atomic bomb. You know, yeah. this has already happened before. Right. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. When they dropped the, the uh, atomic bombs on Japan, that, that's what basically happened to them. Mm -hmm. Tongues were, were dissolved, eyes were dissolved, skin was just burned mm -hmm. off. And, you know, you have bones just standing in the middle of the street. So this could, you know, he, he may cause an atomic weapon to go off. Well, it could be a blast from his mouth. Who knows what it's going to be? But that's what that's basically what, what he's describing. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we're stacking up the, the, the wealth. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem 
shall even go up from year to year to worship the king with a capital K mm -hmm. and the Lord of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So we're going to still keep, be keeping that feast day mm -hmm. every year for a thousand years. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if you got a, a, a nation that's saying, you know what, I'm not going up there to see that king, mm -hmm. they're gonna be they're gonna be in the desert for for a whole year. Right. And then next right. year they, they get their mind straight. Right. I think we better go and give this this, uh, this offering, right? Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and verse 18, and I see it's a couple of chats, and I'm gonna get there in a minute. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, they have no rain. There shall be the plague wherein Yahweh will smite the heathen that comes not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, let me see what these chats are saying. Mm -hmm. The Pope is doing a world tour right now. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing, he's trying to bring all religions together. You know, you've seen mm -hmm. those bumper stickers oh, that say right. coexist, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to bring all religions together under one umbrella. And a lot of the, um, the Christian churches here in the United States have drank the Kool-Aid. You know, a lot of the bishops and leadership of, of a lot of major Christian organizations have drank the Kool-Aid, you know, and so as a result of that, um, a lot of organized religion, I'm just not, I don't, I don't have no time for it. I don't have any time for it. You know, um, you have to be very, very careful. You know, they're, they're, they're uh, you know, T.D. Jakes, you know, he didn't drink the Kool-Aid, you know, um, Joel Osteen drank the Kool-Aid. A lot of these folks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in bed with uh, Oprah Winfrey and, and her humanistic, you know, religion. You know, it's just, it's all jacked up. Some people prefer to have the power they can see today mm -hmm. versus being able to come down here when he comes with all his saints. Mm -hmm. And if he's ruling and reigning for a thousand years, and then when that ends, he's going to judge those because notice you got people that are still being hard headed. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not it's coming, not right? Yeah. Right. So for a thousand years, they're gonna be able to live down here for a thousand years, uh, basically serving us. And then the devil during this time is bound up in in uh in chains for a thousand right. years. The most high gonna loose him for a season, he's gonna get in their ear, mm -hmm. they're gonna rebel again and try to make a war with, with, with the saints, and it's gonna be a you know a 30 second war, you know what I'm saying. And he's gonna wipe them out. Go ahead. I heard that on my phone to turn up and listening to it. Yeah, right, right. right. Saying the things you're saying, they should sit it on my phone. Absolutely. They're gonna they go, you know, a thousand years at the end of a thousand years, he's gonna kill them all, raise them back up, right. judge them, and then throw, you know, death and hell is gonna be thrown into the lake of fire. And that's gonna be the final punishment for all the knuckleheads. So that's gonna be the end of all the knuckleheads. Right. And then the only thing that left is 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 the most high. And the saints that paid the price to live for, for eternity. And I'm telling you, there's nothing in this world that's oh. worth me giving up what I got. You got a lot of leaders that are out here, you know, fulfilling their purpose, which is to deceive people. And we just got to be aware of that. And that's why you got to read the scriptures. Okay. Because it, Let me finish. So, because mm -hmm. if you read the scriptures, if somebody's saying something off, you can judge it based upon the word. Right. If you're not reading the word, then somebody can tell you any other thing and you end up, you know, like, you know, Jim yeah, Jones yeah. drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. the folk in, in, that oh, follow yeah. Jim Jones, they drank the Kool-Aid and they all died. Right. Yeah. right? So, so go ahead. Um, go ahead. Okay, but a lot of people say they read the Bible, but they don't understand. That's why we have Bible studies. And, okay, but they go to a church. If I'm with a pastor and I'm reading I think he's if, telling me the right thing. If you thing. got, a, if I, I get you. Mm. Here's the thing: if you if you're praying, and you're determined to get this knowledge, the Most High is gonna make sure you get it. You know, uh, you know. Sometimes you can hear people say something, and you, and you just know it's off mm. if you've been reading. But you, right. you, you, you saints, all I can tell you is you you have to give attention to this word. Right. You, you have to. I mean, there's not gonna be an excuse. It's right. not going to be as good because he, he has a desire that everybody get it. And I, I'm glad you, um, that question led me to the scripture I almost forgot to give. Uh, okay, so go to 2 Peter 3. Okay, one of our dear sisters saying, I need yeah, more okay. study. I'm doing this every week. 
Right. That's why I'm doing this every week because it, the enemy don't want you guys to get this information. And that's, that's what I say too. You know, because I guarantee you, every week you're going to hear something that's going to blow your mind. Right. But you know, if you mm -hmm. keep coming, you know, eventually, you know, and you take notes and you go back and review the things I'm giving you. Plus, I, you know, I'm recording these things. Um, make certain that you guys are getting it. You know, so go back and look at the video. You know, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel, Dr. Russ E. Hoover. Dr. Russ E. Hoover. Alyssa wanted to. Hmm? Alyssa wanted to. Yeah, go to, go to, go to YouTube, do a, a, a search for Dr. Russ E. Hoover. And you'll, you'll see my, my picture pop up. Go there, okay. subscribe, and just start looking for the weekly Bible study um, you know, messages. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you'll start learning this stuff. Just listen to that stuff over and over again, okay? Well, we're in 2 Peter 3, starting at verse 8. Um, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were. Look at this now. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's, a, that's telling us his heart right there. Right, right. He does not want any to perish. Right. So if you got a sincere person, guess what? He's going to make certain you get what you need. I mean, think about it. Right. Why are we here today? One person asked a question that question somehow got to my wife right she came to me mm -hmm. and said you know meg has got questions that she's not getting the answers at the church she's going to and i'm like the only thing i can think of is start a bible study yeah right, right. start a bible study mm -hmm. you know so I'm, I'm like i'm not the guy that says you know we got to have you know 10 15 20 50 100 people right. one soul is all it takes yeah. One soul is important to the most high, so one soul is important to me. You know, so there's no way that, you know, if if he cares and he does care, you say he wishes that none would perish. But that all will come to repentance, to a change of heart, and to give themselves over to him, right? <laughs> but it's, uh, notice it said here now, but the day of Yahweh is coming as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, <laughs> and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So it's not, a, he's not talking about no flood here. Mm -hmm. He's talking about fire that next time, good. right? He's talking about fire next time. But you still need to have a guide that's going to help you to navigate and understand what, you, what you're hearing, what, you, what you're you know, uh, reading and stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you find someone who's uh, sincere and, and, and care about your soul, you know, you're going to be good. But, you know, I was so, I was so disappointed. There's one brother I used to... Um, be around sometime. Um, he made a comment, and I'm like, "Where, where did he get that from?" He was saying that, um, you know, all pastors manipulate their people. Ooh. And I'm like, "Wow, what, what are you talking about?" He said, "Man, you know, all pastors manipulate their people." Mm. But then later, I found out this guy is a mason. Man. So yeah, if he's a mason. Then yeah, maybe you know what he's doing is is to manipulate because he doesn't care about the souls of people. Right. You know he's just a a hireling. You know you sure talked about people that's a hireling. They don't care about the sheep. He's there, you know, for the money. Yeah. You know, so yeah, <clears throat> there's a, there's some people out there that will manipulate people. I'm I'm not that guy. In fact, in fact, we've been in all the time we've been having these Bible studies. Uh, how many offerings have I raised? Right. Not a one. It's not about the money. It's about the souls. Right. Right. Uh, so. You, you know, you find somebody as, as, as sincere and care about people, and, you know, and I'm not saying it's wrong to support a work, you know, uh, but I'm just saying I'm not about that. You know, you've you known me for a long time, Holly. you know, from, right. from a ministry point of view, you know, I've, I've never been one to take advantage of people, you know, right. it's, not, it's not about that. It's about, it's about the soul. We have to stand before the most high right. and give account for how we treat his people. And I'm not trying to get beat up. You know, by the right. most high, I'm not that guy. 